Incineroar has been synonymous with VGC since it got its hidden ability back in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon's VGC 2018 format. Its access to Intimidate, great typing, and nearly bottomless support move pool caused it to be the premier Fire-type Pokemon in every format it's been legal in, with alternative Fire-types playing second fiddle to it or being shallow imitations of what the team really needed. But something strange is happening right now. Incineroar not only failed to win its first World Championship since it was released, but it didn't even make it into any of the top four teams at that tournament. And the new format of Regulation H has seen Incineroar's success drastically decrease at the start of it. Why is this happening? Is our goat washed? Is this finally the end of Incineroar's dominance in VGC? Let's discuss. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should just really subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subbed, do me a favor and double check because only like half my viewers actually are. But before we begin, here's an ad for, well, me. Hi, do you like giving me money? That's what I thought. I've spent the last eight years on YouTube building wacky teams with just about every Pokemon that I could. And while I'm not an absolute top tier player, I've got some really cool achievements to my name like 18th place at Knoxville Regionals, top 64 at the North American International Championships, and I even qualified to compete at the World Championships, but don't ask me how that went. If you want to support my channel while also getting something really cool in return, you can consult me to help you improve one of your teams. I'll help you fix up anything, even that weird Dragology team I know you got kicking around the team builder. If you send a $25 tip to me and fill out the form in the description, within one to three days I'll have tried out your team and sent you back a write-up with various versions of it, and some replays to help you get on the right path to make that weird Scoville and team work. Why $25? There's like 180,000 of you subscribed. If I did any less, I would never finish these. Link to have me personally fix your team below. You get to support the channel and blame me for losing your next event. Okay, back to the video. This isn't coaching. Now, Incineroar's meta dominance has ebbed and flowed over the years, with multiple formats seeming to make the cat a little less mandatory for a team's success than others. But despite this, Incineroar has always managed to bounce back in some way due to a meta development being in its favor. Take for example Regulation F, where Incineroar at first seemed to be a weaker pick due to the existence of Urshifu Rapid Strike and Ursa in the Blood Moon, who could easily remove it from the field. But as time went on, we saw Incineroar usage rise and it even won the Charlotte Regional Championships on Wolf Glick's team. From that point on, we saw Incineroar usage get right back to its place on top of the format. Going into the 2024 VGC World Championships, one of the safest bets anyone could make was that Incineroar would go on to win the whole thing. This is because Incineroar was one of the highest usage mons in the Regulation G format, a format which not only included the Pokemon that could threaten one-shots on it like Ursa in the Blood Moon and Urshifu Rapid Strike, but also included powerful restricted Pokemon like Zamazenta, Calyrex, and Kyogre. However, while Incineroar was one of the highest used Pokemon in Day 2 of the tournament, it was notably lower than usual at 5th place, behind not only Urshifu Rapid Strike and Rillaboom, but Raging Bolt and even Farigaraph. Beyond this, as the tournament went on, Incineroar's placements were skewed more towards the lower placing teams in Day 2, to the point where out of the top 24 teams, only 9 of them had Incineroar. While this might seem like a large amount at 37% usage in top 24, the fact that only one of them made it to top 8 is telling that Incineroar might not have been the call for the event for once. You see, Incineroar's job in a restricted format is to disrupt the board and decrease incoming damage for its partners. This is usually a pretty trivial task for it as its bulk and typing allows for Incineroar to live some pretty ridiculous hits. But every team in top 8 had a restricted Pokemon which didn't mind Incineroar's Intimidate, either due to the item they were holding or just being a powerful special attacker. The main things Incineroar was meant to exploit its positive matchups against were just absent from top 8 entirely, and these super and these Restricteds tended to be flanked by Pokemon which could instantly nuke Incineroar with super effective damage like Urshifu Rapid Strike, Landorus, Iron Hands, and even Don Dozo which managed to outplace Incineroar in the tournament. At the highest level of play, on the biggest stage, Incineroar failed to rise to the occasion, but players thought that this would certainly change with the new format of Regulation H being just around the corner. This format not only banned those restricted legendaries like Miradon or Zamazenta, which gave Incineroar its biggest issues, but it even banned Iron Hands and Urshifu, two of the largest obstacles for Incineroar's success. However, Incineroar doesn't seem to be performing at the level players anticipated it to. At the time of this video's release, Regulation H has been dominated by a few teams, but three of the most detrimental to Incineroar are Archaladon Rain, Don Dozo, and Mouseape. By far the one Incineroar struggles the most into is Arch Rain, which is currently considered to be one of the strongest and easiest teams for a player to pick up, leading it to be an extremely common matchup which players can't afford to not have an answer to if they want to do well in a tournament. A typical Archaladon Rain team will include Pelipper, Archaladon, Rillaboom or Amoongus, and a Basque Legion, with the final two slots being flex picks. The reason Incineroar struggles to do anything into this matchup is because of how passive it is in matches. 
Incineroar will typically want to lead off to intimidate and fake out a Pokemon, allowing for its partner to be more aggressive by using a speed control option or just scoring a KO. Worst case scenario, Incineroar can always pivot out with Parting Shot. The issue with this in the Archaladon Rain matchup is that Archaladon is a Pokemon which heavily punishes passive teams. Its signature move Electroshock causes Archaladon to charge up the move, raising its special attack stat by one stage in the first turn, then firing off a 130 base power electric type move on the second. Even worse, if Rain is active, this move will charge and fire on the same turn. In this matchup, Incineroar can only do a few things, all of which aren't great against a Pelipper Arch lead. If the Incineroar decides to fake out the Pelipper to prevent Tailwind or Weather Ball, Archaladon gets a free Electro Shot off. If the Incineroar decides to fake out the Archaladon, Pelipper will get to move and Archaladon's ability Stamina will activate, causing it to gain a defense boost, thus allowing it to now score major damage against the Incineroar on the next turn with a super effective Body Press, a fighting type move which causes the user to attack with its defense stat. And because it's likely slower than the Archaladon anyways, Parting Shot isn't nearly as safe as just hard switching out, leading to Archaladon to continue to snowball its special attack stat with Electro Shot turn after turn. In this all too common matchup, Incineroar can at times feel like it's spinning its tires, struggling to accomplish anything while its teammates fall around it. Not to mention the fact that Basky Legion is a stupidly powerful water type which can't be faked out due to its ghost typing and threatens a one shot in Incineroar at any point during the match. Incineroar similarly struggles against Mousehape teams. The combination of Mousehold and Annihilate has been a thorn in players' sides for multiple formats. However, Pokemon like Urshifu, Fluttermane, and Chiyu made the matchup much more manageable to the point of Mouseape basically entirely falling off. With these Pokemon now banned, Mouseape has once again become a meta-relevant archetype which can easily sweep unprepared teams. This duo combines Mouseholds' ability Friend Guard, its access to the move Follow Me, and the move Beat Up with Annihilate's great bulk and signature move of Rage Fist. Rage Fist is a 50 base power ghost type move which gains an additional 50 base power every time Annihilate is hit by an attack. If Mousehold uses Beat Up on Annihilate, it will immediately turn Rage Fist into a 250 base power nuke, which can one-shot nearly anything in the game. Incineroar only exacerbates this issue due to its extremely negative Annihilate matchup. As a ghost fighting type, Annihilate is already immune to Fake Out and can threaten super effective damage on Incineroar with Drain Punch. However, what makes this even worse for Incineroar is the fact that Annihilate will almost always be running its ability of Defiant, an ability which raises the user's attack stat by two stages if any of its stats are lowered by the opponent. So Incineroar's Intimidate effectively only makes Mouseape a stronger lead, which can now KO Pokemon which would otherwise be able to endure at least one powered up Rage Fist. Finally, Dondozo, which has always been a rough matchup for Incineroar, is even more powerful now that special attackers like Raging Bolt and Fluttermane can't just unga bunga their way through it. In this matchup, Incineroar is once again punished for its passive plays by having Dondozo spam its signature move of Order Up into it, granting it an attack boost every time it connects with a Pokemon. And at plus 2 in every stat, Dondozo doesn't really mind taking a knockoff or a Flare Blitz even when it's Terra Grassed. Incineroar is also just always threatened by a one-shot from Wave Crash. Dondozo are typically flanked by Pokemon like Glamoro, which can remove Incineroar from the field with a Meteor Beam, and Palmot, which can outspeed in close combat Incineroar for an easy KO. The fact that all three of these teams heavily discourage Incineroar from coming to the matchup means that players have had to search for less passive Intimidate options for their teams. At the moment, both Paldean Taurus Blaze and Paldean Taurus Aqua are considered strong alternatives to Incineroar if the team requires an Intimidate user. Beyond that, both of them are even able to threaten Incineroar themselves with super effective water or fighting moves. Even the physical attackers of the format don't really mind facing off against Incineroar that much, as Dragapult has skyrocketed in the past couple of weeks, with Dragapult notably being a Pokemon which is both Fake Out and Intimidate immune. Incineroar still sees high usage, don't get me wrong, but it seems that at this point in the metagame, all the cards are stacked against it, leading to Incineroar struggling to win or top 4 any online events. However, as the format has progressed, there's been a notable increase in Psy Spam teams performing well, leading to Dark-type Pokemon being in higher demand for their immunity to Expanding Force. This might just be Incineroar's last chance to sneak back into being the top Pokemon in the format, but we'll have to wait until after the Baltimore Regional Championships to see if it really gets its act together. So what do you think about Incineroar? Is it gonna come back? Does it always come back? Or is it finally going to fall off and be completely irrelevant for this regulation? Or do you think it's just going to be a mid-tier pick that's outclassed by tons of other Intimidate users and just struggles to get anything done? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It means the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. 
You also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, Kayla Thompson, and the main mon for the generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which are going to be in the description. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.